on the count of podcast. Podcast! <laughs> <laughs> still love that movie. I too. It's so good. <laughs> and I like thinking about better movies when they're <laughs> about to... Uh, uh, welcome to the Everyone's a Critic 1993 <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I'm professional film critic Sean Patrick. With me is Amy. Professional hater Amy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, she's uh, giving... She's given herself a, a, a title now. You're welcome. <laughs> what everyone needed. Mm-hmm. And uh, an MJ. Hello. Professional asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, find us on the Everyone's a Critic 1993 Facebook page, uh, which is now not, not just Amy's wall. It's not just my tree outside anymore. <laughs> no, and you need to go over to our Facebook and check us out because uh, I'm just now posting a picture of a signed copy of a picture of Jurgen Proke now, our patron (laughs) saint of this show. Ah, The biggest star of 1993. That's right. Has finally arrived. (laughs) But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Was he the biggest star? Because after today, I feel like Joey Pants (laughs) takes on that role. Just because Joe Joe Pantoliano is in every fucking movie in 1993. He is. (laughs) Every fucking movie. He, said, oh. we were, he popped up today and we're like, what is he doing here? <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll but get to that. We got another movie mm. to get to first. Yep. Uh, which is uh, a one in the long lines of the uh, Saturday Night Live adaptations. Uh, uh, one that uh, I believed for many years that I really loved. I actually like felt like it was a secret sort of great movie. You lied to yourself, though, didn't you? I feel like I've gaslit myself for like 30 years. You absolutely Uh, have. (laughs) Coneheads. I thought when I scheduled Coneheads instead of doing Fatherhood, I thought uh, Fatherhood. Fatherhood. Right, right, right. right. Because he's a hoodlum and he's a dad. (laughs) Get it? Get it. It's a a pun. (laughs) We love puns over here. I thought we could get get out of uh, doing, you know, the, the... terrible looking Patrick Swayze movie by watching one we skipped earlier this year. I thought I'd bring it back. You know, I'll run, I'll run back Coneheads and, uh, and I like Coneheads. So I'm going to, this will be fun. And it wasn't fun. There was nothing fun about it. It's fucking miserable. It's a fucking shrill mess. And I wonder, like, if we went back and watched Fatherhood, like, would we have enjoyed ourselves? Because, I mean, I it mean, is Swayze. Compared to what we watched today, I don't know if Fatherhood could be as bad. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe you'll have to sneak bad. back and, and pick a, and grab Fatherhood now. Yeah. Just to give it a chance to be better than the two movies we watched. Oh, damn it. <laughs> oh, man. Coneheads is, is fucking brutal. Coneheads... And I, I think I, I've, I've told this story before. The only reason why I saw this film in the theater, Becky, my best friend and I, saw this movie in the theater was because R.E.M. had a previously unreleased track called It's a Free World Baby featured on the soundtrack. Mm. Now, again, I, wanna, I, I need to stress this because the 90s, pretty awesome at, at decent soundtracks. I mean, we had some really good ones. This was one of those. It was a great soundtrack. And when we went to see it, there's only there's a scene in uh, in Subway. <laughs> Chris Farley on a date with the, with the daughter Connie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, the the effects, the special effects, are so horrid <laughs> as she's shoving <laughs> shoving like sandwiches down her mouth. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Right, but you can barely hear Ariane's song in it, and yeah. my, Becky and I were so pissed. It was just like you could hear like just the <laughs> part of it, and uh, that that was it. <laughs> and it was like, can we go home? Should we just go home now? We, we, we came, we barely heard. So we'll circle back here. Uh, Coneheads is based off of a sketch from uh, Saturday Night Live in the mm-hmm. 1970s. The idea is that uh, Beldar and Primat are aliens from the planet Remulac who have come to Earth and I guess become trapped and uh, are trying to, to assimilate into uh, regular culture. Uh, and try and fool the people around them. And there are two jokes in the sketch, essentially, uh-huh. MJ, that uh, either somebody comes in and just accepts the premise that these are regular, everyday Americans who have come, moved here from France uh, and that they're just, you know, kind of weird. And then the other premise is somebody is obsessed with proving that they're aliens. Yeah. And that's the two, those are the two tracks of joke that, don't, that exist in that sketch. And for a three-minute sketch, it actually kind of works, especially, you know, you've got a young and dynamic 
Dan Aykroyd and and Jane Curtin doing the bit, it kind of works. And then you you put Steve Martin into that situation or Richard Pryor or you know really funny people for this three minute sketch. Right. It can be very funny. Could have been very funny. But in a in a ninety three minute movie. Yeah. When you're just doing that joke, whether it's Sinbad just accepting the premise that this is a foreigner who works for him or just the, you know, it's not that, you know, everybody just going, this isn't that weird. Jason Alexander, it's like, yeah, you're just my neighbor who, you know, who I play golf with. Yeah, that's normal. The, the giant cone head thing. Sure, whatever, you know. Uh, or you've got Michael McKean and David Spade who are like, uh, no, those are fucking aliens. Yep. Why are you, why is no one else saying that these are fucking aliens? <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's the joke. And that's the joke. Okay. Rounded out with a bunch of really, like, slightly racist at times, <laughs> like, slightly think? problematic stuff. The, the, the fucking taxi driver, and then they have they have Beldar dressed like him, so he's yeah. wearing a turban. Yeah. And he's his... Fuck you, movie. <laughs> Fuck you. Well, the turban is just decoration, Amy. <laughs> oh, right. Sure. Sure. There's no special significance to it whatsoever. Oh, good Christ. This movie. Oh. Like, and not like that, like, I forgot. And and forgive me, because I, I was a huge fan. Like, I, I still have the DVDs of, of SNL from the 70s, because it's some of the best work they've ever done. Mm. Um, And I remember this, the, the sketches with the Conets. I don't remember... Them having three rows of teeth. I don't think <laughs> so, we covered that. I don't know why yeah. we had to do that here. You know well, what I mean? There's a like a Cronenbergian level of body horror in this movie that goes completely uncommented. You are upon. not wrong. You are not wrong. Like, there are fetishes the that love this oh my movie God. for that. For that alone. <laughs> the teeth thing... The birth thing where you're seeing like the cone head baby in her stomach, oh, like God. pressing its cone head out of her stomach and when, moving when her, her all her water around. breaks, you yeah. know what I mean? Like right there. <laughs> the fucking wave of amniotic fluid oh, God. flows out of the and just everybody Yeah, oh that's that's a normal way for a woman to have a baby. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> well this <laughs> a pipe first? No, she's having a baby. What what are these right? <laughs> What what are what are the, the, the these creative choices here too? Because it's like you know you've got Dan Aykroyd and and Jane Curtin back reprising their roles, right? In the you know in, in with the sketches they had normal teeth. In the sketches they they basically you know were just normal aliens. Yeah. You know, I don't feel like the the, the creative choices paid off in this film. They just made my tummy hurt. <laughs> yeah. 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 Needless. It's needless. It's needless. Uh, also, do we of, need like, this movie, though, too, you know? <laughs> on top of that, then you've just, like, everything, every reaction is, me, me, oh, me, me. <laughs> That's every reaction and everything that happens. Oh. I've just given you Dan Aykroyd's performance in this movie. That's it. it, it, it he was he, he was so hard to look at in this movie. <laughs> everything, like, every, every, every choice. Like, you know, just, if I were Jane Curtin, I'd be like, you know what, I don't think... I can be romantically into this idea because <laughs> he is so disturbing to look at. And I don't remember him being that disturbing from the sketches back in the day. But again, this is 20 mm -hmm. some odd years later. There's, you know what? It, it, it's too much. There's too much money in this movie because like the charm of the original sketches was that they were low budget. You know, the, there's a charm to the fact that you could see the, outline of the cone on his head. Like you can, you know, <laughs> there's charm in like the low budget quality of a sketch where it's just like you put a traffic cone on his fucking head and cut <laughs> off the sides of it, you know? <laughs> yes. A little bit of blending and that's right. all it takes to make it look like a cone. <laughs> uh, but here they've got all the money to, to do it, to make it look, you know, as realistic and possible. And it's like, it, it just doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. It, it looks, it looks bad. Actually. Yep. It, it kind of exposes the joke rather than underlining it. <laughs> Uh, the premise is they crashed on Earth. They were sent here to, I guess, destroy the Earth or take it over or whatever. But they don't. They lose their ship, so they've got to pretend to be people. Uh, yep. They try to assimilate Adam Sandler, who's the joke of Adam Sandler's character in this movie is that his name is Wiener. Yeah. In case you didn't know, hilarity. <laughs> That's it, that, that is the entire joke. His That's name it. is Wiener. <laughs> I, I, mm. I don't know. Uh, yeah. 
I hate it. <laughs> if you're somebody who, when you hear the word wiener, you just start giggling, I guess this is the movie for you. <laughs> he gets him a, uh, he gets him a, uh, a green card, a fake, uh, fake identity, and uh, sends him on his way, and they begin to live their life. They have their baby, and, they're, and meanwhile, Michael McKean is in the background the whole time, like, trying to find them. Uh, and deport them back to their planet, I guess, is what he's trying to do. But really, how does he, like, he can't, that's not in his jurisdiction, is it? <laughs> I, would, I mean, who else's jurisdiction would it be? Well, that's the thing, like, NASA? who do you even contact to turn them in, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think it would be NASA. <laughs> it's like, yo, you, you, got, you got aliens over here, man. Yeah, you, come take care of this alien <laughs> problem. Can, can you, like, you rockets? Yes. And ninety-three laugh minutes, laugh-free minutes later. (laughs) (laughs) But really, that's so. That's the premise. But the plot is really just a series of fucking sitcom gags, where it's like uh, you know the birth scene, and then you've got. uh, him being like an overbearing dad, you know, like uh, warning Chris Farley not to date his daughter and whatnot. And yeah, it's and this was Michelle Burke's first movie, wasn't it? As far as I know, because then she did, um, she did uh, Days and Confused, I think, after this. Yes. Yeah. Um, which again, far better film. <laughs> I would recommend low bar, a very low bar. <laughs> um, I'm sorry that this was the first thing you got cast in, but you know, in this movie. Riding on the on the on the coattails of Wayne's World, you know, once you have a good sketch, I, this is where they were starting to talk about making Rob Schneider's making copies guy a film. Oh God! Could you imagine a fucking film with good. just him as a oh, good Christ? What a night! I mean, but then they did they did make it's Pat. Yeah, exactly. It, have you heard of it's Pat? So it's Pat. Okay. <laughs> this is. Oh. I'm going to try and describe this in the least offensive way possible. I'm going to show you a picture while he's so, describing. Pat, the, the joke of Pat is that Pat is a genderless name. Like, you can have boy Pat, you can have girl Pat. Just like Chris, Terry, It's like Chris, Tony. Terry, yeah. Yep. So, everybody, the joke of It's Pat is that nobody knows which gender Pat is. And no one wants and, to ask. And, yeah, everybody's being too polite to ask, or there's just people just trying to just force them into a situation where they have to say... Their pronouns. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it was hilarious. (laughs) People were lining up. Three minute joke, though. I will give credit to who's the actor. Well, it's Julia Sweeney. Julia She's, Swe- amazing. She's amazing. She's amazing, and she makes this look kind of work in a three minute sketch. But then you try and turn that into a whole fucking movie, and it's just painful. It was so painful. Then and you've it- got that. You've got uh, the other one that they did uh, with uh, Al Franken's character. Oh, Stuart Smalley. Stuart Smalley. Right, and and, and again, it's like okay, but Wayne's World worked. For for one reason, and it you know it, it, it you're including music, you're including you know a great director, a great director, um, great pop culture references. I'm sorry, I'm not giving Wayne, I'm not going to give Mike Myers any credit for yeah, Wayne's World working, Bell especially if we, yeah. after what we saw of what he did with the rest of his career. I think it's clearly Penelope Spears made that shit work. It's true. It's true. <laughs> and Rob Lowe. Yeah, much and Rob credit Lowe. to Rob That's Lowe. True. He was amazing in that movie. That's true. Fuck, no I didn't even credit get to Mike... career. <laughs> you know, um, no credit for Mike Myers. All of the worst things in Wayne's World are his fault. Fuzzy, if I ever, if you ever hear me when I'm asleep, where I'm mumbling, "Not the Guru, not the Guru." That's it's a Mike Myers movie oh. that sometimes creeps back in my brain when I'm dreaming, oh, and I'll never I'll never get that time back either. That is a singularly offensive. Film. One of the worst fucking films of all time. That guy from So I Married an Axe Murderer <laughs> is an Indian guru. Yep. Oh. That white guy. <laughs> that white guy from So I Married an Axe Murderer. Oh. Indian guru. Yeah. Just imagine the offensive voice he's working in that. We have so much contempt for Mike Myers on this so show. Much. <laughs> he's on the cut list, right? We put he, him there. He's yeah. definitely on the cut list, yeah. Good, because he belongs there. He's it's, on it. <laughs> Rob Schneider's on it. Um, the term daddy is also oh, on it, by the way. God yeah. damn it. Bill Mars on it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who could we add from this movie? 
Oh, from this movie? Who's yeah. a, who is a cunt in Coneheads? See, because <laughs> I, I mean, think, the thing is, like, you I got, don't necessarily, because I, I don't sucks. think, I don't, I've never liked anything that Aykroyd did yeah. outside of SNL. Uh, but I don't hate Dan Aykroyd. I, 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 yeah. Ghost, uh, Ghostbusters. I love Ghostbusters, of course. Well, that yeah, go Spies saying, Like but... Us. Are you kidding? Like, I mean, there, there's some, uh, but yeah. yeah. There's, Dan Aykroyd. I don't know if I'd want to watch Spies Like Us today, because I just don't well, think, I think I'd be having the same experience yeah. again. And then again, you know, Chevy <laughs> Chase, too, is just a, oh, you didn't need to go on the cunt list. Because <laughs> fuck Chevy Chase. That's how I feel. Um, yeah. But, you know, then you've got, like, fucking Phil Hartman. Jan mm. Hooks. Hey, hey, I got a know? great idea, right? This is my great idea. Let's hire one of the funniest human beings on the planet, Phil Hartman. Yeah. And then give him nothing, nothing funny to do. Nothing funny to do. <laughs> Let's just have him be there. Why did it, people did that to him all the time back then? <laughs> so I married an ex-murderer. So I married, exactly. He almost made that work. He almost. Sh- but... He should have he deserved better. <laughs> he you know what I mean? Better. God damn it. Oh, my Phil. God. Jane Phil Hooks, Hartman. I mean, she had, just, like, a good mo- it, moment. How sad is it that no one ever found that that Phil Hartman movie? Yeah, that was his own. Yeah. Because they talked about making um, Caveman Lawyer <laughs> a film, and I'm like, okay, I would have paid to see that. I would have paid to see that. Oh. What a what a, what a a great thing. Or, or, you know, give him a feature length of his character from The Simpsons, you know, just oh. about him, about Troy McClure. That'd be beautiful. <laughs> But I, sadly, he's gone now, and I, yeah. I it's fucking tragic. So oh, terrible, terrible fucking tragedy. Yep. yep. Yeah. So, again, we've, we've got a lot of great players in this movie. Um, by the way, David Spade couldn't act his way out of a fucking paper bag in this movie. <laughs> Holy shit, was he bad. Every line was, like, so dry. Like, there was, like, I, I needed to go take a shower <laughs> just thought... to moisten myself. <laughs> I liked his bit. Like oh. I thought that was the only funny bit in the movie, honestly, where he was just intercepting the mail and like I, I I'll give him. Let, let yeah. me. Take, yeah, let no, me take some, that that a, seemed very much David Spade. It's, it's a little weasel. <laughs> but it, like later on, he could make that work, you know. And later yeah. on, like I think his acting de- definitely got got better. But like this was, it, it, I was like my face hurt from cringing every time he was on. <laughs> And not only that, but I mean, you are working opposite Michael McKean. You better step that uh, shit up right yeah. there. So Farley doesn't do anything funny in this movie. Farley, man. I mean, how how hard is it to make Chris Farley not funny? I know. Oh, they they did it. <laughs> well done, by the way. God, that man is larger than life, literally and figuratively. Yeah. And the fact that he he had nothing to work with, you know, I mean, at all. Mm-hmm. It 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 it. Disturbing. <laughs> and then, and then I, he, I'm trying to think of one funny thing that he did in the entire movie. Nothing. Like he he, he would mug for the camera, I yeah. guess you know here and there. But I mean, ultimately, and not only that, but he was like super creepy, sexist until you know he finally gets called out about right. that kind of thing. That made me very yeah. uncomfortable. Um, it, I, yeah. It, <laughs> Whose idea was this? It's like, you know what we haven't resurrected in a long time? Let's do the Coneheads, because oh. the kids love the Coneheads, you well, know? Everybody remembers that that sketch from so many years before. That's a, and the only reason, like, we do is because we're pop culture junkies, but yeah. there's a lot of people that, you know, that, that wouldn't have been the sketch I would have pulled and said, you know what, we're going to do a movie about that. You well, know what I mean? That, the only reason this happens is because Belushi died and they couldn't do the samurai movie, which would have been offensive, There's... which would have been offensive, but jo- he's John Belushi. They would have done it. They would have done it. Well, okay. Then, <laughs> if that's the case, then Lisa Lupner should have had her, <laughs> like her, her and <laughs> her and uh, Bill Murray's kid, Like they, they should have gone off and got married and had little weird kids and because that I would have watched, you know? Mm-hmm. God bless Gilda, R.I.P. But I mean, th- this just wouldn't be my top choice of let's pull that sketch and make it a film. I mean, if you're gonna do it, th- why not the bees? Do the bees? Do the the bees. bees were funny. They, That's they used, true. I don't know. They used to just have these bees. They just have the cast dressed as bees wander into the. I guess it was there was like this thing in the '70s where they were worried about killer bees coming up from Mexico, <laughs> and so they decided. Oh God, they did do offensive accents, didn't they? Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All of your pop culture is tainted. But Belushi, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. It's like you're looking back going, oh, and I laughed at that at one point. I'm a horrible person. I'm so sorry. But the sketches were actually pretty fucking funny. 
if you could just get around the the racism of yeah. it, you know, which you really shouldn't get around the racism <laughs> of it. Um, Wait, take out the racism. Yeah, maybe, that yeah. You're <laughs> Wait, was 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 SNL bad? <laughs> no. Wait, Drew Gooden did a video about SNL, and he did cover okay. some of this shit too. So, um, but like for us, being the age that we are, um, I think we we deserve to carry some shame mm-hmm. from from enjoying those back then. Because we, we didn't know. Well, no, but we, we grew up we in the whitest town in Iowa. We were way too young to know just how. It's like that's funny. It is. That's that's so funny. he's a white guy. Doing a Hispanic sort of mm. lilt. I mean, the, mm. the whole thing was just. I hate my childhood now. Like, <laughs> now I'm sad. Now I'm sad. That's okay. I, I, That's why MJ's here, that. though. Like, we, we start Balancing laughing. Us out. We start laughing about this stuff, and then you, you're just sitting here like, why would that be funny? Yeah, that's not funny. <laughs> what are you guys that's watching? That's not okay. It's not okay. Dressed as, why is dressed as bees funny? <laughs> I mean, it, it was. It was. <laughs> it's was just racist. That's all. It's terrible. Um, no, you know. Again, I think it just overall with this with this fucking film. Hmm. Um, anyone who carries like I, I'm telling you right now, if you feel like, oh, you know, I saw that. I saw that when I was in high school. You know, and um, yeah, it was really good. Like I'd watch it again. No, don't do it. <laughs> don't don't do it. You you stay away from it. And um, even though it is free on, on Amazon <laughs> it is, Prime, it is free. <laughs> we paid for that movie. Oh. oh no, we didn't pay for that movie, but we paid in other ways for the second movie. So I, I, I wrote a review of this that's yeah. uh, up now, uh, and uh, I'll I'll give it to Amy to put on the Facebook page because somehow I'm I'm not an I'm not an admin on what? on this Facebook page, but that's Amy an, is. Well, I mean, let's face it; it was a my <laughs> tree that people were bu- you know putting bulletins up on. So I and, uh, Amy will post my review of Coneheads I just on, did. on the Facebook page. And, I just did. Uh, I was writing about how the lasting legacy for me of Coneheads is the term parental units. Yep. Uh, and the reason <laughs> the reason this terminology lasted as long as it did is because of us, because of Generation X. We we picked up the term parental units because we want to have parents that we like. But we also need to keep an emotional distance. Yep. <laughs> so parental, parental units parental, has like units. the perfect amount of like acknowledging you're my parent, but also keeping you distant as a unit. <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a physical <laughs> item, not a person. <laughs> Why are we so horrible? <laughs> I mean, my God. Um. <laughs> Between that and consume mass quantities, which we used to say that at parties. <laughs> and then you smash that. a beer over your head. You, you have to open every single can, <laughs> but keep them in the rings, and then just drink it like that, like they did on the show. Um, but yeah, yeah, parental units that really stuck with all of us for like, you know. Yeah. But I mean, again, if you're Gen X, you, you're dead inside anyway, so that just kind of <laughs> makes sense. It just makes sense. Okay, ow! Can you, my dog, my yeah. dog? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Here I am over on our Facebook, and I, I don't know how to make you a, an admin. <laughs> okay. Let's just go back here. Um, can we can we fuck off from this movie, then? Because I... <laughs> I have to give you a couple of things from the IMDb page. Oh, good Christ. Uh, th- you'll love this. So, Chris Farley's Ronnie uh, guest setter uh, was written to replace a character portrayed by Bill Murray. <gasps> since Murray was considered too old to play a teenager... <laughs> Also, oh, oh. Oh, no. no. Murray actually hated Farley in real life. <gasps> he reminded him too much of John Belushi. That kind of breaks my heart. A little, a little bit, bit, right? Yeah. God. Mm. <laughs> oh. Way to bring it down, man. <laughs> Wait, Jerry, Joey Lauren Adams is in this? Did I miss her? I... I missed Joey Lauren Adams. Was she just like one of her friends in the car? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She was. Uh, I love wow. her. Yeah. Uh, that set for Remulac yeah. that they were on, mm-hmm. $300,000 to build that set. <laughs> was it worth it? <laughs> I want you to ask yourself, was it worth it? I think of what you could do with $300,000 right now. That would be the last thing. <laughs> I'm going to build Remulac, obviously. Good God. Uh, what a terrible film. What a terrible uh, film. <laughs> 
It's so bad. <laughs> MJ, you haven't talked much. Because MJ hated it. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us your feelings. Get, get into your emotions watching Coneheads. Blah. <laughs> I'll just go with blah. Yeah. It, just like the movie that we watched today, which we'll get to, this movie, like I, like I said, Fuzzy started off, thought it was sort of promising, quickly disappointed, and then you fell asleep. <laughs> so, and I didn't want to wake you up because you look so peaceful, and I didn't want to hurt you. <laughs> so... Wow. Yeah. So Fuzzy probably doesn't remember a whole lot of it. Not a ton. No. Not a no. ton? Mm-hmm. You missed out on a few of these things? The only yeah, the only thing was the Shadwell thing. That, yeah. yeah. Shadwell? From Good Omens. That's Michael McKeon's character oh, in Good Omens. And yeah. Fuzzy was like, yeah, all right. And then it's like... <laughs> he delivers like the worst performance of Michael McKeon's it's career. It's true. It sucks. It sucks. Hey, Seriously. Michael McKeon, you know how funny you are? <laughs> Don't do anything funny at all. <laughs> hey, how can... How, we, you know, he's really talented. Let's make sure he doesn't use that in this film. Do me a favor. Um, Yeah, I wrote the screenplay. I'm Dan Aykroyd. Don't <laughs> let anybody else say anything funny. Yep. Ever. Ever. They're just here. I'm going to need all of the funny for me. <laughs> Give even me though, all of Even it. though I'm not funny, funny in this movie either. Yeah. <laughs> even though I'm not funny in this movie either. Uh, I don't want anybody else to be funny. You ever notice? Did you notice how much Jane Curtin melts into the background? Oh, isn't that crazy? And that's again. What did she have to do in the entire movie, other than like the vacuum scene where that's just her vacuuming oh, with her mouth? That's women. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's what we're good for. We'll find out more in our next film. Um, women. He he drives the entire plot. Everything's about him and what he wants and how he's wrong and needs to learn a lesson and whatnot. But she really doesn't get a plot. No. No, and and you do that to Jane Curtin. Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah, that's why you know third uh, third rock from the sun came out. You know because then that way she actually had something to do. They were like, oh, let's keep in with the alien alien theme. Let's give Jane Curtin. <laughs> And thank God for that. I don't know. I. How about the sight of uh, Dan Aykroyd in that Remulac outfit? When he narfled the Garthok? Yep, yep. Thanks. <laughs> I didn't need to see little Danny. <laughs> Good Christ. Uh, he is not a man who is built for that outfit. <laughs> nope. 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 Said, what was that, a diaper he was wearing? <laughs> <laughs> A it diaper was... and Mila Jovovich's costume from Fifth Element. Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> oh my God. Nobody needs to see Dan, Dan Eckert in that outfit. But then again, this is the same guy who made Exit to Eden. Oh, oh God. You, if you would How like, dare. If you would like to have nightmares for the rest of your life, get your hands on the movie Exit to Eden. In which uh, Dan Aykroyd and Rosie O'Donnell <gasps> play un- undercover cops on a sex fetish island, and they have to wear leather. <laughs> As the whole, <laughs> I'm just... put an ice pack on your face. That's all right, And If you need a minute to go, let your brain explode. That's okay. Yeah, Rosie O'Donnell with the with the leather with the with the whip. Full fetish gear. Full fetish gear. They were in full fetish gear. That was none of our fucking yeah. business. That was none of our business. No. Nobody should be subjected <laughs> to that. Nope. No, that that's fully a Gary Marshall idea. Hi, Gary. By the way, hi. <laughs> I'm looking at the ground and looking waving. <laughs> hi, Gary. Say hi to my dad. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, this got dark fast. <laughs> oh, no. Like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Got that image of Dan Aykroyd out of your head, uh, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, actually, that's great. <laughs> so, what Klaus wears when he's walking out of the water <laughs> in India, that's yeah. what Dan Aykroyd's wearing. <laughs> Only the difference is, Dan Aykroyd was none of our fucking business. No. 
No. Little Robbie, Cla- however. Klaus is better. Klaus to is look better. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can. If I can so you, do you have a picture of Dan Aykroyd in a mesh shirt? I'm doing it right shirt? now. I'm looking. Because <laughs> if we do, we're going to get a cardboard cut out of it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. In oh. loincloth. Oof. I got to show Fuzzy because Fuzzy slept through this Oh, part. yeah, you slept through that part. You didn't see it. Let's see if mm. I can get a picture. Yeah. Because if I have to have it, so do you. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> it's tiny. Oh. I mean the picture. The rest you of see, it. You get a get a get a good look at that. Lean, lean in. Uh, <laughs> not nope. No. No. Not bo- I don't like to body shame people, but people. I mean, I don't. I'm certainly not any better looking than Dan Aykroyd, but I should. I should not be wearing that outfit. I mean, I. No, he may as well have. Um. <sighs> no, well, I think that you know what it is. It's <laughs> since you brought up Dad. Um, I think it's because Dan Aykroyd's like our dad's age, yeah. and we didn't want to see dad in a loincloth. Oh. Why the fuck would we want to see Dan Aykroyd? Wow. Oh, mm. That's a bad image. Oh, Tell me about it. After open heart surgery, dad had to have a catheter put in. Oh. Saw a lot of downstairs wow. dad on that one. Oh. Mm. Yeah. No Nobody one, wanted to know. No, no one cares. No one no one thinks to ask me, Amy, were you ever traumatized? Yes. <laughs> no one gives me hugs. No one checks on me. They just assume I'm okay. After that. I haven't been okay for 15 years. <laughs> Check so, on me. So you haven't been okay since I was three? Yes. Like, you were the only reason <laughs> you, you I was didn't okay. Notice. And yeah. didn't Did you notice. not notice? Well, I guess I'd always known you that way. Why is she carrying a gun around? <laughs> it's actually, this is no different. It's really sad. It's really sad. This is all I've ever known of you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, she, when she was 10 years old, she was walking around with a Glock in her hand going, I could go off at any minute. Any minute. I didn't, though. Because <laughs> I, I had Barbies to play. Oh, Barbies. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, remember Mo- the Barbie movie, you guys? Oh. Oh, let's just... Fantastic. Can we just it's palate cleanse movie. our brain, our mm. frontal lobe for a minute, and just smile at Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling from afar? <laughs> <laughs> we don't deserve you two, by the way. We don't deserve you. Oh. Um, can we talk about so, the pile uh, of shit I... that we did the other one? Yeah, we'll okay. say, one second. I just want to mention that Steve Barron, the director of this film... Mm-hmm. Uh, went on to commit other cinematic crimes oh, after this. Oh, 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 I'm ready. So get ready. Uh, remember The Adventures of Pinocchio, 1996? Who could forget? Martin Landau and Jonathan Taylor Thomas oh, as, good. as Pinocchio. Yes. I can see the yeah. cover of the of the movie right now. That is a that is a Steve Barron cinematic crime. Classic Steve Barron. <laughs> that is one Classic. of his many. He also directed the video for one of the great cringe rock songs of all time. Like, if ever I want to cringe over being a child Mm -hmm. and and a teenager in the 90s, I'll just think of Let's Get Rocked by Def Leppard. Oh, no. (laughs) No. He directed the video for that. Yeah, that's a crime. (laughs) That's another another one of his many, many crimes (laughs) he committed. (laughs) <laughs> oh wow! But he he also worked with Bowie a lot, so you know, I mean, maybe he makes up for it a little bit. He worked with Bowie vi- on his videos a lot. Did he? Yeah, he did. But it also looks like he did the jerk. Did he? Oh, did he? I don't. I was not aware. I was not aware that he did that one. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at some of these. He's got 118 director credits. I mean, the man worked mm. a lot. He. Yeah, and uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I need, I, you know what I need? I need some IMDB up in this shit. <laughs> I thought I'll... the answer was going to be therapy. But I... that was <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. Oh, I'm so hurt by that. <laughs> I wouldn't have to have therapy if people would just hug me more. <laughs> uh, what is, why does no one want to hug me? That's why we gave you that machine. <laughs> With the arms, you know. <laughs> one of those pillows. Like... <laughs> With a little face on it. But it's, I'm going to tell you something. It's not the same. <laughs> it's very cold. It's, it's oh, like... that just reminds me of um, uh, Big Bang Theory. Uh, 
Leonard built a hugging <laughs> machine because his mother would never hug him. That makes me sad. It really was sad. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, his entire directorial thing is mostly dominated by music videos, so you can't really see much of his uh, much of the work that he did as a film director. But I know I'm looking at that, and I'm not seeing him at all. So yeah, that's that's crazy though. That's okay. It, it is okay. I mean, it's not. I would say <laughs> a combination of this and the Adventure of Pinocchio is nothing compared to the motherfucker who directed the other movie we're talking about. How dare movie. you? Oh my god! How fucking dare you? I was you? like, man. Wow, the, I'm going to tell you about a man by the name of John Weitzel, the director of the 1993 film Calendar Girl starring Jason Priestley. Because Steve Weitzel is maybe the least talented human being to ever direct a movie. Maybe. At the very least, he has the worst luck of anyone because he's ended up working on just the absolute trash of all trash when it comes to movies. <laughs> I mean... I gotta find it here because it's not popping up immediately. I know I'm seeing that as well on this end. <laughs> Weitzel is just—it's John Weitzel, okay, not Steve. John Weitzel. Close enough. Um, just the least talented human being to ever be allowed to direct movies, and I can prove that by pulling up uh, his IMDb, which, uh, <clears throat> as a director, this man—this is what this man has made. He, he made these things. He's responsible, He's responsible. for these things. <laughs> and it, 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 it's just, it, it's a, so I'm trying, I'm gathering myself because I've watched and written about and suffered through these movies. You did that to yourself though. Sea Spot Run starring David Arquette. Which Classic David a, Arquette. An extended scene of just David Arquette rolling around in dog shit. That's just an entire, like, five-minute scene of just him rolling in dog shit. <laughs> Could not be a better metaphor for that movie. Um, <laughs> he also made... You're also angry. <laughs> <laughs> he also made... Well, I'm angry because this is the guy who directed Malibu's Most Wanted. Oh. In which Jamie Kennedy affects a super racist accent to play a, a white kid who wants to be black. Well, like Jamie Kennedy's a fucking oh. hack, uh, so... He's awful. Just a just terrible, god-awful human being. Do scream, being. and then you should have just ended your career oh. after that. Just be done. Joey Pants in this so, fucking movie, though. Big, big Mama's House is a bad enough cinematic crime, but he didn't even direct Big, Ho big Mama's House. He directed Big Mama's House 2. Oh. <laughs> and, electric Boogaloo. And Big Mama's House 3, like Father Like Son. Oh, my God. Those are classic <laughs> films. Classic and the idea that I didn't know there were two more oh. outside of that. Titles hurt my head. Are you okay? I don't even know. Do you need to lie down? I need more ice pack. I, think. I got more in the and freezer. You need to prepare yourself for one more thing that this motherfucker has done mm -hmm. because John Weitzel is the director of the movie Holiday. <laughs> is that on the Hallmark Channel? <laughs> Tell me it was. Starring Emma Roberts and Luke Bracy. Emma Roberts has made a lot of shit films, though. Oh, man, that is... Uh, wow. I'm not surprised by that. Wow. John Weitzel needs to be in prison. He needs to be in prison. <laughs> he needs to be... <laughs> Drawn and quartered. <laughs> cut list. Put him on the cut list. Uh, God right. damn it. Yes. John Weitzel, if anybody belongs there... It's John Weitzel. What a monster. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you, sir? <laughs> God. Um, what's his violation? Just being awful? Just being the worst just film worst, director in history. Director. I'm not seeing any of his TV work, so I don't know. He directed Girl Meets World. Oh, <laughs> really? Well, I like a couple episodes. He's maybe. not going to get okay. any other jobs, so it's just like, he's, well... he's directed something called... Bella and the Bulldogs. Nope. I don't know what that oh, is. Nope. That one's not great. He directed one of the worst Christmas movies of all time, Deck the Halls. <gasps> what a piece of shit that is. Was Reese Witherspoon in that one? Oh, God. It was just total fucking trash. Oh, uh, it's uh, Danny DeVito and Matthew Broderick. Oh. It's, the movie where, it's the movie where their daughters are performing on stage, and they're like, hey, those girls are cute. Oh, look how hot they are. And then they turn around as their fucking daughters, and they start doing vomiting everywhere. Yeah. That 
I want that's a scene. On them. Oh. <laughs> that's a scene of that fucking movie. You've got to be kidding. I, I, I never saw it. Deck the Halls with Shit. Danny DeVito, Matthew Broderick, Kristen uh, Davis, and Kristen Chenoweth. Kristen Chenoweth, get the hell away from John Weitzel. That's get away true. from him. You could do better, Stop honey. This. God, you got to working with him too, too, too much. That's too bad. He, he might be a nice guy, but mm-hmm. like he's a, he's the worst human being on the planet in terms of directors. Well, he made this film, Calendar Girls. <laughs> calendar Girls, which are trying not to... T- calendar Girl. Calendar, gr- calendar, sorry, girls calendar Girl. Calendar Girls is actually an okay movie starring Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren, I know. That's we got to get bigger buttons. <laughs> I like that movie. That's not terrible. It's not terrible, not, but this one was. This was awful. This was awful. This is a film about uh, three friends in the 1960s who decide to stalk Marilyn Monroe just before her death. Just before her death. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah. Yeah. What? Kurt Fuller did. Um, Angel on Supernatural. Kurt Fuller did? Mm-hmm. See, that's the thing about uh, this the cast. Gallows, yeah. yeah, because he played, the... he played a dick angel on <laughs> Supernatural. Is that, a, is that a specific brand of angel? Well, they're all that's really a dick angel. That's true. But, like, there's, there's a couple of them that are fine. <laughs> Most of them are dicks, but a couple of them did are Did you fine. recognize them in the movie? Oh, I did, and I I couldn't quite figure out where it was, and then I'm just like, and then it clicked, and I was just like, oh, Supernatural. I think that might even be a picture from Supernatural. So it looks like it. <laughs> it the, like, the, it. like I said, I, the premise is that these three guys, like, they're about to split up. But one's going to college, one's going to the army, one's getting married. Uh, these th- these three boys grew up together, basically. <laughs> right. Circle jerked it to Marilyn Monroe when they were eleven. <laughs> Um, started their cult. Started their cult. Yeah. yeah um, One of them is named Duty. <laughs> so we call him cults are more respectful. <laughs> like mine. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're just lazy people. Um, yeah, then they call him the dude, which you don't cross that no, stream. That is Fuck not. you on that one. <laughs> I mean, this movie existed before the Big Lebowski. Doesn't matter. But... It's not your name to have. <laughs> he is mean, not. He is not dude. He's not dude. You're um, not dude. So, I mean, th- this cast is interesting because you do have, I mean, Jerry O'Connell, who, mm-hmm. I mean, I think the best role he ever had was in Stand By Me. Um, then you have, like, uh, Joey Pants, who, again, is in every single movie in 1993. At least this time, he's not playing an Italian tough who, you know, has <laughs> some kind of shady dealer. <laughs> right. He's kind of on the up and up. He's got an excellent he's a, house. He's, like a, he's kind of like a like an effect uh, movie guy. Like, he wants to be, like... He sells he sells bomb shelters to get by, but he, like he really wants to be an actor. And right. He's not tough at all. He gets not. beaten up very easily. Yeah. Uh, so it's a departure. <laughs> Was it a nice one though? Like I almost missed Italian Batty. <laughs> um, but it, again, the thing about Joey is that whenever you see him in a movie, it's kind of welcome because mm. he's just one of those guys that's just kind of a uh, he's just, his 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 appearance always seems to to brighten my day a little bit. Um, Stephen Tobolowski, Ned Ryerson from, yeah. from Groundhog Day. <laughs> Playing the Italian tough that isn't Joe. Oh my God. He <laughs> and like... Kurt Fuller and then the whole fucking sign language thing. Yeah. So that was, that was a very controversial thing, even at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that they went out and they were trying to find a deaf actor to play this role. And then they settled on Kurt Fuller and, and the deaf community actually protested this movie. Like, this is not Okay. For you to for you to do this to cast this actor who is a hearing actor in this deaf role, mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, they, they yeah they did protest. What a cushy paycheck that must have been though. It's like I don't have to memorize any fucking lines aside from just like my my sign he did, language. He did shit. learn actual yeah, he, sign. He language. did actually learn it. That was yeah. actual sign language. He did actually. Sure. Him and Tobolowski did both try to learn sign language. But I mean, it's you're they not messed up a couple times, but they. It felt weird to me. It was needless. Yeah, it's the whole the, the whole movie is just needless. Yeah, why do we yeah. have to have a deaf character at all? You I know? know, I mean, honestly, if you're going to like nothing against like the deaf community at all, but what right. I'm saying is, in a movie like this, it's just kind of a weird thing to well, oh, just by add the way, that to the needless. character for no in, right. Like, yeah, yeah. It seems strange. Yeah, like if you're gonna make if you're gonna put a deaf person in this film, like make it one of the trio of of the of the, of the, of the guys running driving out to L.A. Make him one of the friends. That'd if, be kind of cool. If yeah. Gabriel Olds' character was deaf, yeah, I mean, would it have changed anything it, about his character? I mean, character honestly, at all? I mean, truthfully, I don't. You know, I hated this movie. Um, <laughs> Imagine them 
jinxing a deaf person. Though. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah they do a yeah. jinx in this movie, uh, which is a, a, like, like a 50s. weirdly obsessed with that. Yeah, like a 50s thing where you, like if two people say the same thing at the same time. Then it's jinx. Then one of them says jinx. The other one's not allowed to talk. Which, again, no one ever did that. Yeah. You know, I, I don't, you don't commit to not talking. Except, unless things. your name is Duty. And then you <laughs> then you commit and to the you bit. Do it. Duty. Because <laughs> I'm not going to call him Dude. No. He's he, Duty. He absolutely. Because he loved uh, a puppet named Howdy Duty. That was a real thing. That, yeah, and I just the realized. The biggest television. I'm going to, I'm talking straight to MJ here. Okay. The biggest TV star of the 1950s was a redheaded puppet named Howdy Doody, who would sing a song called It's Howdy Doody Time. Over and over and <laughs> over again. Did Howdy anyone Doody offer Doody. financial compensation for this? <laughs> <laughs> Not until right now. Can you pay us, please? <laughs> and now that's a piece of information that's going to live in your mind forever. And you didn't deserve that. <laughs> I just no. stopped talking to Sean altogether. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it's a plot point, I guess. They became friends because they all liked Howdy Doody, and then they grew up and they start, all started liking Marilyn Monroe, which in a parallel universe, they just ended up stalking the puppet and trying to have sex with it. Yeah. <laughs> Much better movie. I, I better really movie. I'd like to have seen that. <laughs> yep. Actually, I'm going to write some fanfic about that, nice. I think. Way more interesting. Alternate universe. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'd do that, and then I would have Jason Priestley and Jerry O'Connell's character what about, get together. Like three yeah. wacky friends who go to LA to try and find the original Howdy Doody puppet so they can steal it. Yes. That would be And even sleep with it? Yes. <laughs> it just needs to be a key part of that. I feel. My cogs are churning right it's now. It's far less problematic than when they came up. It's with so true. Him. Yeah. That is so true. Because the whole premise of the movie is that these three morons just walk up to Marilyn Monroe's house and just... Yep. <laughs> hey. Hi. Hi, is Marilyn here? <laughs> we just want to, you know, be around her for a minute. That's and, not creepy. And then Maxwell Caulfield as man in bathrobe <laughs> man in answers bathroom. the door. The only good character in the movie. I don't even Because see... he has a normal human reaction to three morons showing up at his house and asking to talk to Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. He fucking gets his dog and fucking unleashes the dog on them. Like, yes, thank you, sir. That is the proper reaction to yes. have to this situation. <laughs> Looking at this, too, and it's just like, um, Maxwell Caulfield, yeah, man in bathrobe. It's like, but but he was in the opening credits. Yeah. Like his name was there. And Why? You don't remember what was who the he purpose? Is. He uh, he was Rex Manning in Empire oh, yeah. Records. He was he was Grease Two. Grease That's two. where everybody knows it from. But yeah. then what is it? Wasn't he on a, a daytime show or something? I think he was. On, wasn't he on a soap opera like Guiding like Light opera, or something yeah. like that? Um, big deal in the eighties. Not such a big deal by the time this movie came out. No, well, but then he kind of came back around when he did Rex Manning. Yeah. That was like 95, right? Yeah. 94, 95. There's the, all, uh, we'll always love Rex Manning day. Ah, oh, still celebrate it to this day. <laughs> um, yeah, what a shame, though. Because also rapey and problematic, but that's a whole other thing. Extremely. <laughs> extremely. Um, but, like, again, yeah, the best bit of acting was just that little just, bit, <laughs> bit of him at the, 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 the door. The only good choice this movie made. <laughs> I just now realized the nude woman slash Marilyn Monroe on the, they go to a nude beach in this yeah. film. It's Tuesday night. Do you know, do you remember her? Oh, yeah. From uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, okay. yeah. That's, well, I did not realize that. I, I did not know that. But it. let me tell you something about the woman who played Marilyn Monroe in this movie. Oh, do. do. Because there's a woman who, who was cast as uh, Marilyn Monroe. Uh, she doesn't get much to do uh, yeah. in the movie, but she does have a couple scenes. Her name is Stephanie Anderson. And in her career, the only thing she ever did was play Marilyn Monroe. She played Marilyn Monroe four different times in four different projects. You are kidding. <laughs> Marilyn, my love. <laughs> Calendar Girl. Buford's Beach Bunnies. <laughs> and Death Becomes Her. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that crazy? But, what, uh, a, what a weird career. But now that she had that turn in Waterland as the other pupil. 
<laughs> I mean, that, that was that was quite the career turn. That was really? quite, quite the yeah. breakout moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> she gets to show what Stephanie can do as opposed oh, to being Marilyn. Finally get to be me. <laughs> oh, my God, that's hilarious. Uh, I wonder where Stephanie Anderson is now. I wonder if it'll be... And interesting where they are. Where are they now? Far more interesting than this movie. She's married to an entertainment lawyer in Sherman Oaks, California. Oh, that's nice. No, I just made that up. Ah, oh, still left damn it. Mystery Science Theater, actually. <laughs> but yeah. You have some quotes from this movie. Not <laughs> as, by choice. As we re-traumatize MJ. God damn it. <laughs> MJ, there's an activity you can no longer engage in. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. You want to talk about canoeing or <laughs> can no longer canoe and or, or say the word like no. we're, it, it's almost making us vomit just saying it yeah amy what does canoe mean well sean <laughs> it's interesting you should ask because uh, i can tell you uh it's 50 slang and that 50 slang is uh to copulate to engage in sexual intercourse and it's related to the expression to tip a lot of canoes what the fuck how what? did how did you get there in your mind? <laughs> I, men are men are amazing at this, but how did you get from there to sex? <laughs> what what metaphor are you working here? You know what I like about it is that it's timeless. People are still <laughs> using it to this day. Oh yeah, I heard four people just yesterday. <laughs> just, got canoed right. this weekend, you guys. Woo! Uh-huh. Um. <laughs> Disgusting. Because uh, do you paddle a woman like a boat? What do you do? What are you doing? You know what? See, Those I gotta are get, questions yeah, I'm I gotta get to my oars in the water. <laughs> like I said, what women, is the metaphor? But women float. I said that. <laughs> I said that. Unless they're witches. Unless they're witches. Unless they're witches, they float. <laughs> you can't rub Ben Gay on a heartache. <laughs> Or a hard on. Or a hard on, for that matter. What does that mean? What does that mean? Wait, that's said like five yeah. times in this movie. Can't rub Ben Gay on a heartache. <laughs> Some screenwriter just thought they were a fucking genius and I- when they said that to each other. Like, yes, yes, you can't, you can't put, you can't put Ben Gay on a heartache. <laughs> Absolutely, you can't. What is that actually, Ben? Ben Gay. Is it's, it's, it's like a lidocaine. It's you, you put. It's a topical where you put it on. They still make that. Is it Ben Gay still a thing? Ben Gay's still there. Because I, I, I probably I was I was clearly thinking maybe that having gay in the title might make them. Work. I, I when I was in tenth grade, um, in order to make the guy that I liked laugh, I told him a story of of how Ben Gay became Ben Gay because the great Benjamin Gay <laughs> came up with this idea that he'd put like cocaine into a cream <laughs> i had this like a, it's like every time i hear ben gay it's like oh benjamin gay where are you now and, and <laughs> the guy that i like didn't laugh and i knew then we were not mm. meant for no. each other because yeah. no, i i, I had a, no i had a great story too i can barely remember it but i was 15 but yeah. anyway um yeah we heard that like five or six times and by the way do not put ben gay on a hard on <laughs> you are going to tingle and burn for a good long time <laughs> And you do not want to put that inside of a woman because it's then a, she's just going to lose all. all it's all a pain reliever, people. right? It's, yeah, 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 yeah. Just consider like it's a topical pain reliever. If you have like a knot in your back, put a little Ben Gay on it. Yeah. A little Benjamin Gay for your back. But you can't put it on a heartache. You can't put it on a heartache. <laughs> um, one of the, one of the one of the front lines, one of the top lines in the beginning was, uh, "He didn't have a mother, I didn't have a father, and dude didn't have a leg." <laughs> <laughs> Jerry O'Connell literally had a wooden leg in this movie. Like, why? why? What, why? what was the fucking point? What, was the, what did that add to his character? Was it that because had... of Howdy Doody? Like, oh, he, that's why he should get, he should win this contest. It's <laughs> part of it. It's made of wood as well. That, but other than explaining the nickname, what point did that have either? Exactly. And then, like, you know, then they, they, they go needless. swimming. And it's all needless. It's just, it doesn't even, like, bring the the story along. Like, no. <laughs> It just give him a leg. Nothing. It does nothing. Nothing. Um, uh, her derriere looked like two puppies fighting under a silk sheet. <laughs> if it weren't for my horse, I wouldn't have spent that year, year in college. college. <laughs> Still one of the greatest lines of all time. Thank you, Lewis, Lewis Black. Black. <laughs> uh, um, read that again. Her derriere. <laughs> Looked like two puppies fighting under a silk sheet. 
what the fuck? Well, I mean, because I'm picturing that, and if you've seen puppies under a they sheet, just, they're just, they're just they're, rolling everywhere. They're like... anxious. They don't want to be <laughs> under a sheet in the first place. And what's happening in her ass? It's like <laughs> well, it's moving it's, so it's, much. <laughs> 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 just their ass just slap ass cheeks just slapping That's, together. And you don't see two puppies going woo woo <laughs> no. and they would be rotating. Right. <laughs> ass cheeks don't move independently. No. <laughs> not not in that way. <laughs> no. What is what oh shit. Hang on. Because the only way that uh <laughs> hang on. Olympia Dukakis. <laughs> Why are, you, why are you bringing Olympia to cut? Wait for it. Um, it's like two kids. <laughs> quote. Hang on. Oh my God. What does she say? It's it's um. She's like when they're when they're watching a woman dance on the dance floor, and Olympia Dukakis is just like, it's a. It's a big Let me see. <laughs> Looks like two pigs fighting under a blanket. Now the way that she said it. <laughs> now that yeah. That's fucking funny. That is yes. This. Two puppies fighting underneath a, a silk sheet makes no sense. No, no, no. Sense. no sense. None whatsoever. None, none at all. No. Don't stalk celebrities. Can I just say? <laughs> Can we talk about that? Can we just say, never okay. It was never okay to just go to a celebrity's house and knock nope. on the door. Nope. No. Just and... buy a cardboard cutout off of eBay like I did. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm normal. <laughs> what? The movie treats this like the most adorable thing. Yeah. But, but like... J- Jason Priestley continuously refers to canoeing. Did you canoe her? Oh, are you going to canoe her? All I want to do her? is canoe her. I That's just want all. to canoe her. You know, um, I'm baffled. <laughs> but Marilyn has no role to play in that, I nope. guess. And you know, well, because women. <laughs> yeah, I don't matter in the '50s and '60s or '70s, '80s, '90s, and today. Yeah, still. She doesn't get a choice in this. Nope. I mean, we're just three fucking randos who just showed up at her door. She's got to fuck us, right? See, <laughs> well, obviously, That's how the world works. obviously, That's how the world works. If you find a celebrity in the wild, just go. I found you. <laughs> we have to fuck now. Why? Because I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> I sent you a letter when I was eight years old. <laughs> And I've been collecting memorabilia yeah, and I, I, pictures, and memorizing and everything things. about your life, where you, what your apartment, what your name, what's your uh, address. Yeah, just, your... just the idea, though, that back Putting then that that address was so out there for the public. You yeah. know what I mean? How creepy is that? Oh, so creepy. Because if you did that today, like uh, Sarah, uh, uh, Rebecca Schaefer. Sorry, yeah. you know that's like that. My head goes right to Rebecca Schaefer, and well, I, mean, I fucking hate when that. When was the last week somebody had to be removed from Taylor Taylor Swift? Yeah. Plot, uh, plot and, of land. She should be terrified because her fucking <laughs> fans are crazy. They are. They <laughs> no, they 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 would kill anyone who gets within ten feet of her. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, they got snipers. That's a, on that's the, a fucking easily. Taylor's got a fucking that's army a around her. Right. <laughs> Try and get within ten feet of Taylor. Try it. <laughs> the Swifties will kill you. Swifties will take you down <laughs> while they're saving the entire economy. <laughs> Single handedly <laughs> saving the economy. This oh, is no yeah. joke, MJ. That's true. Taylor Swift is putting the Eras tour in movie theaters in October, on October 13th, and she's already saved movies. <laughs> like, change the game. Like, movie theaters are going to be sold out for an entire week. They're already They're sold already, out now. They've got merch coming wow. that is already gone. Uh, Taylor Swift cups and, and popcorn tins. They're, they're wow. concerned. They may have to hire security. Yeah. To, to keep safe the Taylor Swift cups and popcorn. Do you know, it's not, it, it, it's Taylor Swift's world. We're just living in it. And I'm happy with that. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I, 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 I accept her. our Taylor overlord. I, yeah. I, yeah, that's, that's fine. Well, that's I mean, fine. honestly, Swifties, it is. Swifties, save us all. Save us Write all. Taylor in in 2024. I agree. <laughs> Although Imagine then it, I just feel like she's not gonna have any time to write music though if she's in the <laughs> White House. But hey, so if gonna... Donald Trump could be there, yeah, yeah, you it know, can't be that hard. Seventy-five-year-old <laughs> blind homeless man could be president <laughs> if that's the I case. Mean, I mean, we've got a doddering ghost right now. So... True. Yeah. Right. <laughs> He's got. He's we've trying. Got... We... Poor guy. Just, just bring Obama back. You know that. Just, just do it. You're in there already. Just. 
Call him up and have him come back. We've got Don Knotts as a ghost for a president right now. It's fine. Mr. Limpet's it's fine. in there. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Mitch McConnell is dying oh, right before right, our right eyes. Right before our eyes. Fucking Diane Feinstein's the fucking crypt keeper right now. Oh, God. <laughs> Term limits. Hunts. Grassley in Iowa's been dead for 30 years. Yeah, I don't know if you keep him up like, like Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> He's been Weekend at Bernie's for the past 30 years. I just keep dragging his corpse around. <laughs> why, is I, why is he always walking around with his arms around his aides like that? Oh my god. <laughs> they just carry him from boat to boat. <laughs> in the words of Gabriel from Good Omens, <laughs> just shut up and go ahead and die now. <laughs> <laughs> we just erased their memory. Exactly. Just put them in a new spot. Here you go. There you go. <laughs> no, Grandpa, you've been in the home for a good long time now. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep looking at a picture of spaghetti with meatballs. I'm so hungry right it now. It really looks good. It's a baked spaghetti with meatballs. Spaghetti. Did you know did it yeah. irritate you in the number of scenes here? They're like they get out of the car and they leave the door open. Oh shit. And then they walk into the toy store, and they're like, you got to come with us now. We're going to go to stock Marilyn Monroe. This guy works at a toy store, and he just fucking leaves. He just fucking leaves. Shuts the door, doesn't lock nope. it. Just leaves in the middle of the day. Don't lock up the till I think, or anything. I think a kid had just walked into the store as he's leaving. Yeah. And he's the only employee. Yeah. The only employee. <laughs> <laughs> and it, but, but what's weird to me, it, I don't know why this came to my 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 brain, but Jason Priestley is like, you know, this place could be closed for the next year and no one would even notice. And I'm like, dude, it's a fucking toy store. Is it just us because we grew up in the 80s that like toy stores were like the pinnacle, <laughs> the only place yeah. you wanted to be next to the arcade? Like, and it did look sad. God, not toys to, were sad in the 60s. Not to mention, I mean, if you close this, where are kids going to get their guns? That's so true. Man, they have a whole fucking wall. <laughs> A and whole fucking wall. And they're all the same one, <laughs> Yeah. Though. Like, it's all just one I know. They're gun. probably BB be, be, be guns. They're probably... Be. Are they? Because back then, you wanted your toddler <laughs> to have a fucking gun, if you could. Get them ready. Vietnam's right around the corner. <laughs> the toy store, there's just a gun rack. Just a gun rack. <laughs> the toy yeah. store. Just, which makes sense, you know? They should have given us toy tampons when we, we were oh, little, so that wow. women could get to know what's going to happen later on. Give a guy a gun, <laughs> give a woman a tampon. But make sure she's taxed. Don't worry about the crazy that just got the gun. <laughs> One of my favorite lines in this movie was getting a boner with someone else's name on it. Oh, isn't that how boners oh. work anyway? Though, mm. like I, I mean, did, you don't want to. Yeah. Doesn't have if my you're name giving, on it. If your if your own name is on your own boner, <laughs> you must really like yourself, <laughs> Jason Priestley. <laughs> Can we, uh, well, can we just cover Jason Priestley had a tattoo on his ass in this movie? Born to raise hell. Born to raise hell. Who's going to see that, Does he, how, sir? How bad? Not even the girls bad. are going to see it. Like, the, no one's looking around. Like, no. no. Jerry O'Connell's <laughs> going to see it. Hence when he's the getting, reason they it, should get together. It looks great when he's getting pegged. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 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 We're talking about the Steely Dan song. Peg. <laughs> Peg. He will come back to you. God. How does that fit into the canoe analogy? <laughs> I hate everything right now. I don't know how to seg out of that, but uh, they're, they're, the last line that I wrote down was, you're 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. Uh. Which sounds like something our uncle would have said to us when we were little kids. <laughs> well, considering these guys would have been old enough to be our uncle, because the true. movie's set in 1962. That's true. Um, I was surprised by one thing. That they didn't like have that uh, American graffiti ending where they say where everybody ended up. Yeah. Or like, it's Stand yeah. By Me, too. Same way. It's like, and then... Uh, and then we, cause we all know that Jason Priestley's character dead, dead, dead in Vietnam, yeah. totally Just dead. Totally in Vietnam. dead. Yep. <laughs> and like the, the the line that his buddy that he, who, who's doing the voiceover says, he's like, they are actually giving Roy a gun. <laughs> he's what all of five five. He's not really the toughest How looking dude no. in this movie. No. How he bad does Jason Priestley want to be James Dean? I mean, like it's so 
Re- so obvious. That's who they should have went to see. Yep. They should have been going to Hollywood so, so he could be with James Dean, because that's really what he wanted. <laughs> oh, my God. When did it's Dean die? That, the, Dean was probably the 50s, gone by right? then. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. probably gone by then. Um, uh, but it's so, like, Marilyn Monroe has just been, I, I think, I dare you to watch this and Blonde together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like this dystopian Marilyn Monroe drama and, you would have Blonde, to be in a... I would never advise anyone to watch Blonde. Blonde. I think Blonde is a garbage film. Yes. And I think the people who made it belong in jail next to John Weitzel. All the more uh, reason to put these two movies together. They're 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 like accompanying pieces. <laughs> yes, they're both <laughs> equally cruel to Marilyn yes. Monroe. She's yes. like not a human being. Nope. Nothing that she does matters. She's not this absolute fucking genius. These are these are I know they're teenage characters, and I know we don't have and teenage characters are all all dick. Yeah. In movies, I get it. Especially, but they're watching the gr- one of the greatest comedies of all time, mm-hmm. and some like it hot, and they're just go boobs, 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 yep. boobs. boobs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Well, even even in the sign language, Kurt Fuller does that thing where they're talking about Marilyn Monroe, and he just <laughs> rounds out his boobs. Also, and the first word they said, the first thing they called them was bosoms. Bosoms. And I'm like, really? Bosoms. Really. <laughs> I yeah, she's just a bag of blood, you know. Honestly, like we women have, have no value to is these guys a, at all. Is there a human being on the planet that has been as dehumanized as Marilyn Monroe? Anna Nicole Smith. Okay. I mean, similar. But similar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's our problem. That's Absolutely. our fault. You know, because Absolutely. That, we, we did this to these people. Hey, boomers, you killed Marilyn. You killed Hi. Marilyn. Yep. Hi. Welcome to welcome to the truth, fuckers. Aww. You killed Marilyn. She's dead because of you. It, she's dead because of bullshit like this movie. That's exactly it. That's why she's dead. Yep. Who could who could withstand this type of scrutiny where oh. dumbasses just show up at your house in the middle of the night? Right. But and the, the whole like thing that they they where they tried to where they sent him on the date with her, yeah. Which I didn't think it was. We were really hoping it was the housekeeper that was going to trick yeah. him. And go, yeah, <laughs> take me to the beach, fucker. Um, <laughs> and then they, she proceeds to follow him around. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a movie I want to see. That's a better movie. Um, it was you know where where she's talking and 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 the voiceover dude who's on the date was just like you know and then she didn't laugh and you know she looked kind of sad. Well, no shit. You know, and then like, look at what you expected of her. What everybody back then expected. She's just tits. Yeah, that's all she is. Nothing going on up there. And you wonder why. It just there's no real commentary on on her though. Like, there's no commentary like showing how horrible these guys really are. It, it, nothing yeah. is. It, 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 this is this on. is a really shitty thing. To do. This isn't yeah. funny comedy. No. Bull- like this isn't like a wholesome comedy worshiping Marilyn Monroe. Nope. No. no, this is a group of three horny fucks who want to canoe her. <laughs> <laughs> I hate everything. <laughs> Stop saying canoe. <laughs> Wait, you know, that's not even a word I want to take back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm gonna take that one back. No, I don't want it. <laughs> canoe is horrible. Canoe is horrible. Is it a re- is it a reference to to the vagina, like the little la- like the little woman in the boat? I was thinking it was just you know they think that their penises are bigger than they are. <laughs> Check like... out this canoe, <laughs> ladies. I'm I'm not crazy. That's a terminology of some sort for the for the clitoris. <laughs> you know anything about the female body but i'm not sticking anything or my 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 canoe is not that big (laughs) then again i've never had children so (laughs) you've never pressed a canoe out of your body (laughs) Uh, that means i am less than (laughs) and i'm sorry that i was not a mom (laughs) you have failed society (laughs) you're so selfish you're so selfish (laughs) No, I would just be a terrible mom. No, I'm realistic. I like, I like wine too much. I, I only tolerate children because we had some in our family. You I'm know? doing you a favor. <laughs> it's like, make this clear. Consider this one. It's on me. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you know what I, you know what I, what I, what I would have it. It would have been. It would have been nice if we saw some repercussions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, like, they, 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 at one point, it looks like they're getting arrested. Yeah. And, like, they even say, like, Marilyn Monroe wants you to leave her alone. Uh-huh. You're being, and then it turns out to be just this elaborate prank that they're pulling to, I guess, give Jason Priestley, like, a fake death. Yeah. So that the bad guys. So the gallows won't follow him. We're not bad guys, by the way. No, they're actually. No. Kind of nice. Yeah. They seem fine. <laughs> they seem fine. They're going to break his hand in a way that, you know, he It'll can heal recover. Fast. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I can why was that a that. detail? Why was that a detail? <laughs> why right. was, why does maybe, anything in this movie? Maybe they really wanted to make them the the main characters. I would have watched a movie with the two of them, actually. I would have watched I mean, a movie yeah, with them. Kurt being Fuller like, and Stephen Tobolowsky absolutely. together. Absolutely. I want to see them try to stop the other ones from creeping on them. Yeah, that would have been Maybe she cool. hires them as her... She hires them as her security, and they yes. she keep these three idiots away from her. I like that idea better. <laughs> I like every Let's... idea better than this fucking <laughs> movie. <laughs> every idea. All the ideas. Better than this. Please stuff. stop working, John Weitzel. Please. Oh, by the way, the one of the cops in that, um, because there were the two when yeah. they came to arrest them, but mm-hmm. they weren't real cops. Weitzel's brother. Ah! <laughs> yep. Of course. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, well uh, is that is that nepotism, or is that he'd have to be his dad or something? I I don't yeah. I don't know how that works. <laughs> you mean how you got this podcast? That's right. Oh, oh let's, burn! Let's, let's remember who has the talent here, people. <laughs> I'm looking at myself. <laughs> <laughs> Our Facebook page is just pictures of Amy. Oh my god. <laughs> and the lyrics to Antihero by Taylor Swift. <laughs> I'm, I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> it's still my theme song. It just is my theme song. Um, yeah, so can we fuck off from both these movies now? Or? I guess. Well, what, what do we have coming down the pipeline, at least? It's hard, because we're in September, and September they don't really release many movies, and so right. it gets really it gets really dire. Well, I feel like we already are there, if we're that there. helps. We're there. Yeah. We're, we are in the dire. <laughs> this this is in in the dire. Actually, I like that. That's like an album title. <laughs> in the dire. It'd be so sad. <laughs> Picture of me crying, makeup coming down my face, you pouring a bottle of wine over my head. Um, <clears throat> let's see. <laughs> oh fuck. Uh, okay, so uh, you've got your choice. Uh, the Real McCoys with Kim Basinger, uh, Undercover Blues with, uh, I think it's Dennis Quaid, or, or, are you ready, True Romance. <gasps> oh, I think we have to see if True Romance stacks up to what it, it, it was. It definitely does. So, and, yeah, and actually, we're gonna, nice. pair, we're gonna pair it with Striking Distance with Bruce Willis. So you're welcome. Good show, everybody! <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> 